The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. And welcome once again to Grace in Focus, this radio program and podcast from the Grace Evangelical Society. So glad you're with us today as we continue in our study of Romans this week with Ken Yates and Catherine Wright. It's going to be in chapter 3 of the book of Romans today, looking at the wrath of God and the world's universal problem of enslavement to sin. And how do we get out from under the wrath of God? Stay tuned for that, and let me tell you about our website. That's faithalone.org. We hope that you will go there and see all of the resources that are available to you, books, e-books, videos, blogs. You can find past editions of this radio broadcast and podcast. There's a free subscription to our magazine by the same name as this radio program, Grace in Focus. It's a free subscription and postpaid to all who live in the 48 contiguous United States, so take advantage of that. But very importantly, right now, we want to keep in front of you our national conference. We want to keep inviting you to come to that. The 2023 version is coming up May 22nd through the 25th. Lots of great reasons to attend. Here's Ken Yates with something he said recently about our national conference. I've been going to the conferences since, I think, 1990. I've missed a few when I was in the military. I was overseas and wasn't able to come. But there's never been a time when I went to one of these conferences where I didn't learn something, where I got insight to passages of scriptures that I didn't have before. It's just outstanding. You're not going to get any better teaching anywhere in the States. And I'm not saying that because I'm biased. You can get all the details about our national conference at faithalone.org. Now it is time to get into today's discussion on Grace in Focus. This is Ken Yates. And this is Catherine Wright. We are continuing our discussion in the book of Romans. Obviously, we're not going verse by verse, but we are hopefully hitting the high points that help understand the book of Romans in a better way, in a clearer way. And in context. Yes, absolutely. If you've been following us on our podcast, you have seen us go through the theme statement in Romans 1, verses 16 and 17. And we're going to skip to chapter 3 right now. Pretty iconic passage in Romans. It is Paul's conclusion, really, of what he's talking about in chapters 1, 2, and 3. You may remember that in chapter 1, verses 18 through 32, Paul talks about the world is under the wrath of God. He primarily has in mind the pagan world. There was gross immorality throughout the Roman world among pagans and in the pagan temples, for example, the sexual sins and and all that. And so he says that those people are under the wrath of God. An important part to remember is the wrath is something that is here and now. It is something that man's sin brings into his life in the present tense. But what about someone, Catherine, who would say, well, yeah, but I'm not like that. I'm a moral person. What does Paul have to say about that? Paul basically says in chapter two that even the moral person is subjected to the wrath of God because as you claim your righteousness, you are also by default breaking it. Whatever arbitrary rules that you make up, ultimately you're going to break those too. So even the moral person is under the wrath of God. If anything, the moral person's almost worse. So what would we do then about a Jew? You know, because the Jew's going to come along, right? I'm talking about in Paul's day. And he's going to say, well, yeah, even the moral person's bad, but I have got the law. I'm a part of God's chosen people, and he's given us this wisdom in his law. And so, yeah, Paul, I might agree with you that the pagans certainly deserve God's wrath, anything that comes upon them. And that non-believing moral person does. But what about the Jew? They still break the law. They have the law, certainly. And the law tells them what is right and what is wrong. But the law has no power to actually help them follow the law. And so they still break it. They're still, therefore, sinners and they are still under God's wrath. That's right. And I'm reminded in Acts 15, the Mm. first church council. Some came down and said, well, new Christians have to keep the law. And the apostle says, we couldn't keep it ourselves. (laughs) Why would we want to put that yoke on the neck of these new Gentile believers when we couldn't keep the law ourselves? Well, it's it's funny because I was just in Isaiah chapter one this week. The Lord is rebuking the nation of Israel because of their rebellion. 
but it's interesting because he says you, you all go to the temple and you, you do the sacrifices, but all of that's meaningless to me. And so here we got Paul's discussion of mankind. When you get to Romans chapter three, starting in verse nine, here's Paul's conclusion of this matter. Remember, he started off this section, the wrath of God, chapter one, verse 18, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. And what he's going to say is, that's everybody. There is nobody that is righteous before God. There is nobody that does not deserve the wrath of God here and now. What he does, starting in verse 9, is he quotes a number of Old Testament verses. And this indictment is brutal. (laughs) I have the note. Paul's painting a picture of mankind, and it's ugly. (laughs) It is very ugly. And it's interesting that he gets it from the Old Testament. Because if there's anybody who's going to stand up and go, wait a second, that's not me. It's the righteous Jew. So Paul's point is, if the righteous Jew is under the wrath of God... Yeah. Then everyone is. Well, and I, I think it's Zane who talks about this in his commentary. When you look at Romans chapter one, he points to creation, you know, and logic and morality in the inner. But then he comes here to his conclusion and it's just like a shotgun fire of God's word. Here's what God thinks. So in verse nine, when he starts this off, he says, what then? Are we better than they? His point is, are we Jews better than the Gentiles, the pagans? And he goes, not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. The word sin here is in the singular. Mm -hmm. They are all under sin. And the issue is they are enslaved to the power of sin. The unbeliever is enslaved to sin and has no power to escape from it. They are under the wrath of God here and now. Mm -hmm. That's such an important point for understanding Romans. What is the problem Paul is addressing in this book? Is it that you are going to hell or is it that you are enslaved to sin and there's nothing that you can do about it? Yeah. And that's a great, great point, Catherine, because yes, the unbeliever, if he doesn't believe he's going to wind up in hell Mm -hmm. or the lake of fire. But that's not Paul's point here. Right. His point here now is that mankind, unbelieving mankind, is under the power of sin. Here and now, there's no way out of it unless God does something. And obviously he does. He's going to say no one is righteous in the eyes of God. Therefore, all are under his wrath. If unrighteousness brings the wrath of God, as Paul says in Romans 1.18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness, and all unbelievers are by definition unrighteous, then they are going to experience the wrath of God. They do experience the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. And then let's read these verses, starting in verse 10. Verse 10. To verse 18. It reads, as it is written... There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none who understands. There's none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There's none who does good, no, not one. And I'll pause here and just say, I believe it was Zane as well that mentioned that these first few verses deal with what we don't do, right? We None of us seeks righteousness. None of us do what is good. But then in 13, he starts talking about the things that we do do. So their throat is an open tomb with their tongues. They have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Notice it. That's all speech. Yes. Verse 15, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace. They have not known. There's no fear of God before their eyes. And so there is the description of mankind. Therefore, all are enslaved to sin. All are under sin. He says, verse nine, and none are righteous. And that is true for everyone. Here is the problem that is being addressed in the book of Romans. The question is, how am I set free from that? If I am under the wrath of God here and now, What is the answer? 
Now he says in verse 19, after he quotes all these Old Testament verses, Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Paul's conclusion in this section is that by the works of the law, and that would include the moral person, no one will be righteous before the eyes of God by their works. It's not possible. And therefore, since all are unrighteous, all are under the wrath of God. As he says in verse 9, all are under sin. They are enslaved to it. And again, as Catherine has already pointed out, this is not talking about hell or the lake of fire. This is talking about our experience here and now, that there is no one in and of themselves by their works who are righteous in the eyes of God. And therefore, they all deserve God's wrath. I just think it's interesting, too, to point out the idea of the body is pretty prevalent in this, you know, the tongue and their mouths and their feet and even their eyes, their eyes in verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh. Paul later is going to talk about who can deliver me from this body of death. And he's speaking as a believer. He's speaking as somebody who's struggling with their flesh. And I think going back to our first session, that's the good news he wants to preach to the believers there at Rome that even though we are still in these bodies that sin that we have a power that can deliver us from that and so we hope you come back for our next episode on this series and just to remember to keep grace in focus Zane Hodges excellent commentary on Romans entitled Romans Deliverance from Wrath is available right now on our website faithalone.org get half price through february 28th 2023 when you use the code word romans that's faithalone.org would you like to deepen your understanding of scripture and the christian life well a great place to start is our website it's faithalone.org that's faithalone.org We've got all kinds of free materials on the site available for you. One of those which is extremely popular is our magazine, Grace in Focus. It comes out six times a year. It's full color, easy to read, and people are really growing who read it. So stop by and get a free subscription at faithalone.org. We would like to thank all of our financial partners who help us keep this show going. All gifts are tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can be a financial partner, visit us at faithalone.org. We are so happy when we hear from listeners. Maybe you've got a question or comment or feedback. If so, please send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. And on the next Grace in Focus, the solution to being under God's wrath. Please join us. This is the Grace Evangelical Society reminding you to always keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.